So here we're over Pyro 3. Um, we've come here for a mission to acquire an artifact. Um, and uh, you'll be making your way down to a trading post. So wanted to uh, just give you a quick overview and then we can start talking about the planet. Yeah, Pyro 3 is um, yeah, it's just a, a terrestrial planet. It has a very thin, uh, breathable atmosphere, uh, but it's still pretty inhospitable, very cold. Uh, as you can see, some of those lightning strikes in the clouds, but, uh, but yeah, very, very pretty looking. So this is uh, the first time we're actually seeing clouds above uh, a terrestrial planet. You know, we went through quite a few iterations of uh, forms. Uh, what we ultimately ended upon was something that felt quite, uh, uh, quite dramatic, uh, still believable in terms of uh, how the wind would have shaped them. Um, but yeah, like uh, it's showcasing a lot of the, the, the more recent um, tech uh, that came online. Uh, also, what we're seeing here is like some kind of distant thunder strikes. And what this is, it's uh, kind of like a prelude to, you know, future uh, weather features that will be coming on board, you know, and how this will tie into, you know, uh, storms and uh, ship handling, you know, due to the turbulence. And it's great seeing the, um, you know, the rain hit the canopy glass here, you know, when you go through these cloud banks. Also, as part of uh, the process of shaping, one of the things we really wanted to do is create these uh, these kind of like these pockets in between the clouds. So you're in these cavities. So as you're flying through, you get glimpse of the, the terrain beneath you. Uh, but, you know, it, it feels really quite exhilarating, you know, to fly through. Also as well, like um, it's showcasing a lot of the more recent uh, tech coming on board as well. So, you know, um, you know, it's uh, a lot of optimizations been going on. Uh, so it's way more performant than previously uh, than previously it was. Also, like the the level of artifacting that we're seeing here is is substantially reduced, uh, certainly on higher spec machines. It also gives you a great sense of parallax when you fly through these these cloud sandwiches. A cloud sandwich? Yes, that's that, that's what it feels like. It feels like you're the meat uh, or the the cheese of a cloud sandwich. The cheese with cloud sandwich. So as we get out of the cheese, uh, another really big feature that was important uh, for me was, uh, you know, terrain, the sh uh, terrain shadowing and terrain occlusion from the clouds. So uh, you're actually seeing, you know, these uh, large areas of occlusion uh, cast onto the terrain, and it's, um, it just adds that depth. It just adds that believability to uh, what we're seeing in the frame. And you know, when you see like these over, like dark overcast, uh, over, overcast clouds in the hovering above the mountains, it 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 finally completes the uh, the frame. Especially when you see these distant rumbles of uh, thunder in the distance. So James Cameron, who's doing the 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 run through, yes, that is his name. Um, he will be taking us down to the outpost. Uh, the goal for us is to basically make 50 of these, whether they're inhabited or derelicts or, or even um, basically inhabited by a, a, a farmer or inhabited by a gang. So the goal is to have these act as different factions and so that you can develop different rep associated with them um, and you can start seeing how big these outposts uh, stretch to with the, the comms tower that's behind us and then even some of the AA turrets that you'll actually see up close and personal 